OK, this is part two, taken up almost exactly where the other one left off. It's still 905. So I'm going to go off to some of the nice stuff around the um, uh, celestial pole, etc, etc. We've done the Markurian chain. Uh, I'm going to go on the way past the Sombrero galaxy, just because I can, and it's a lovely object. So it's uh, NGC 4594, 4594, enter, enter, view object, yes. So let's just put the name, so we, 4594 Backspace, backspace, backspace 4594 Okay um, We should be right to go While it's taking the shot I'm just going to change these colour adjustments I'll leave them I was just going to say I better unrotate it getting confused all right, um, we're still on expand of three brightnesses, a bit out of the norm, as is contrast. We'll see how it turns out. Sombrero, spectacular object. Known as a sombrero because the spiral galaxy resembles the Mexican hat. Here's the shutter. Image coming in. And very shortly we'll see it. Go full screen mode. And there it is. No, that's not it. It's still processing at the top. There it is. Aha, beautiful. And stayed zoomed in. <laughs> but there it is. That's really cool. Yeah, look at that. Zoom in one more time. That is really cool. Beautiful dust line. Oh dear. In 1912, M104, which is also the other name for the Sombrero Galaxy, uh, became the first galaxy for which a large redshift was found by Vesto Stiffer of Lowell Observatory. The redshift corresponds to a recession velocity about 1,100 kilometers per second. This is way too fast for it to be an object inside a Milky Way and Slipher's observations were among the first key pieces of evidence for the expansion of the universe and the Big Bang Theory. Slipher also observed rotation in the spectrum of the Sombrero, making it the first galaxy in which rotation was observed. That's really cool stuff. I thought bloody um, Hubble was the bloke who did all of this redshift stuff. Oh, well. Interesting. Hmm. So there we have it. Um, Sombrero Galaxy. And we'll keep kicking on back over here. We've got uh, another galaxy before we get to a big globular. We're going to go to Centaurus A, which is um, NGC 5128. 5, 1, 2, 8 Enter, enter, view object slewing And we'll get out of here 5, 1, 2, 8 File name Back, 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 back 5, 1, 2, 8 And it'll do Alright, again the numbering is just so tomorrow I can pick them up out of the folder that Astro Toast is monitoring. I can see they are all ISO 800 30 second shots and the next one coming in is number 30 which, is, which will be and it'll be named NGC 5128 so I'll know what they are, I can put them into folders and keep them as a record of my observing for tonight. Anyway that's the theory, oops, I'll just click off a shot and uh, you'll see that shot come in. When the shot's shutter closes, this turns blue as it moves the image into that AstroTest and Monitor folder. And we'll then see it appear in that file list there. Just 
just going to get rid of that color adjustment. So we'll see all that in a mo. So the shutter will click shortly. This will turn blue. That will turn yellow as it processes. Here's the blue. Whoop, there it went. There's the yellow processing. And in here, if I scroll down a bit, here it is. NCC 5128. So it says it's processing it. So very shortly, oh, and there it is. The viewer will show the galaxy. And there it is. So let's go full screen. Now I've got to drag it down. I've got to get the color adjustments and start mucking around with that. I am going to bring up the brightness a tad. So we can see a bit more. Yeah, you can just see the dust lane extending up there and down there. Just make it out. I'll go a little bit more with the brightness. And oops, start zooming in. Now this is going to go too far. Back out one notch. You can certainly see it up in the north there. And there it is. So you can see it stretching up there, around there down there so this is an edge on galaxy and one bit of it goes down there and another bit of it goes up there it's pretty amazingly cool that it does this I'll drop brightness now I've zoomed in a bit and it should help make that become apparent a little bit more for me on my screen I can see that a lot better now maybe not in the YouTube video very, very cool. Discovered by James Dunlop in 1826. John Herschel was next to see it from South Africa in 1834 and catalogued it. Magnitude 7, so it's quite bright. Says it's the fifth brightest in the sky, making it ideal for observation. Lenticular galaxy, immediate of intermediate type between ellipse, elliptical and spiral. <clears throat> 11 million light years away at the center of one of the two subgroups within Centaurus group. Messier 83, the southern pinwheel galaxy is at the center of the other subgroup. Which is probably up by the way, it's spectacular that uh, M83. Anyway, we will get to it. Okay, so next is Omega Centauri cluster, which is fairly close by. And if I just get its name... 5139 5139 Enter Enter View object And same as before Out of the viewer Name it so we can pick it up tomorrow 5139 Back back 5139 9 and we'll take the shot that's pretty spectacular now I must remember I've mucked around with the brightness but anyway we soon see you saw the noise as we zoomed in often it's best to leave it unzoomed the smaller it is the finer the pixels and the detail it's actually quite a nice shot for 30 seconds. You can definitely see the dust up there. Well, as I say, on my uh, laptop brightness of the screen, I can. Whether you can see it in the ShareX video desktop capture, I'm not sure. So anyway, that was a shutter taken, and we should see Omega Centauri. It's a fantastic globular cluster, this one. Not as big as 47 Tuck, I don't think, but pretty darn sweet. And there it is. Isn't that just incredible? Wow, that is just incredible. I'll drop brightness a tad, mainly because the core is bright. Look at that. Look at the detail that comes out in these DSLRs. It's why it's my favorite um, video astronomy stuff, uh, and my favorite video astronomy cameras. Like I said before, you can stack you know, 10 second shots and dozens of them with other cameras and say, oh look, I got this image in just 10 seconds. Well, you didn't. You got it in 10 seconds times a whole bunch of shots. 
you know, I tell people, look, if you shoot JPEG, it comes out nice and bright. And they go, oh, if you shoot right, so much better detail, rah, 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 rah. Well, that's fine, but if you want a 30-second shot, shoot JPEG, small, fine JPEG, which the small, fine makes this still, see up here, where I'm waving the mouse, it is still more resolution than a high-def TV. That's got about the resolution of, I think, a, f a 4K. Do you want to change your colour scheme? No. Don't show that again. This usually happens after a while, purely because of all of the memory and other resources going on. I'm, I'm capturing a 20 frame per second desktop video, or I think it's 20 frame. I've got Astro Toaster running, I've got Canon EOS Utilities running, and um, yeah, I'm a very old 2010 or 2009 uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch which has been boot camped to run Windows uh, 7 so it's it's not the best anyway isn't that the most spectacular object that is stunning remember I've got a, a 1.2 degree field of view here and that is we'll go full screen on that that is just stunning it'll take a while to refresh now I'll just blow it up a little bit so it really fills the screen when I whoops too far this is where it, it's got a bit of a bug in Astro Toaster it, it shows you at regular size and then remembers the last time you looked at something it was bigger than that. So let me just tap, double tap, drag it down a bit so it looks in the middle. And look at that. Oh, I'm trying to move the mouse away and the, uh, the things. Oh, now yeah, let me just. Oh, I can't use two fingers because I've got gloves on. <laughs> I'll just zoom in one more time. Here we go. And I'll just drop the brightness again now that we've zoomed in. One, two, three. Have a look at that. That is stunning. Although it is a bit green. But um, what the hay? I'll get rid of that green again. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get rid of that green here. Well, anyway, it's Amiga Centauri out of the way. Now, what do we got? Blue Planetary Nebula is pretty spectacular. Very tiny, but it's such a iridescent blue. So I'll do that next. Uh, it is NGC 3918. 3918. Enter. Enter. View object. Yes. Wow, that is stunning. Anyway, out of that viewer. 3918. Back, 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 back. 3918. Okay. Uh, Blue Planetary Nebula, take the shot. Yeah, I'll better... I'll go into full screen mode. And unzoom. I'll click unzoom. Resume. Unzoom. <laughs> Just make sure it's the right scale. <laughs> and one more time. Up one notch. Okay, so we'll leave it there. And shortly, it should show the blue planet. It's going to be tiny. It'll be not much bigger than a star, but it's extremely blue. And you'll see that shortly. Beautiful little asterisms of stars here and up in the corner. Little strings of pearls. And there it is. Look at that. See that there? 
right there that is so cool I love that thing the blueness of it is just crazy drag it across this is a red star over here big uh, red giant but this blue thing here look at the color of this thing I'll talk about it in a second lots of noise there but again if I drop because I've zoomed in it makes things brighter anyway so I'll drop the brightness and it might clear up a little bit of the noisy background there we go there it is so it is a bright planetary nebula in the constellation Centaurus called the blue planet blue planetary due to its beautiful rich blue color discovered by Sir John Herschel in 1834 magnitude 8 one of the brightest in the far southern planetary nebula easily visible in a small telescope Wow. Spectroscopy reveals that it is approaching us. It's approaching us at 17 kilometers per second. Now, pretty slow. While the nebulosity is expanding at around 24 kilometers a second. Huh. The central star is of magnitude 15.7. Okay. And remains invisible to optical observers. Estimated distance, 3,000 light years away. Pretty cool. I like that thing. Anyway, I'm going to zoom out so that I know next time I go in I'm not going to have that same problem of the thing. When I click plus, it expands too much. So click span once and drop it around here. It's these sort of wide field shots though that I like. I like looking at that. That's insane. Excuse my stomach grumbling there, folks. I'm really hungry. Now, let's go up here. Where are we going next? Once I start, I can't stop. This is unreal. Well, there's Anna Corinna nearby. Spectacular, spectacular object, which everybody does, but I, and I can't help it. It's on the way down. Oh, we'll go to Running Chicken later. That's just above it. So this is Eta Corinna coming up. This is spectacular object. 3372. 3372. Enter. 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 It's not that far away from where we are. Man, that is stunning. Let's go and have a look. So out to the normal viewer. Turn off color adjustment screen so I can get over here. Spectacular object coming right up. 3372. Let's go to left. Here we go. Back, back, back. Oop. 3372. Again. Just uh, repeat for anybody who suddenly jumped forward and missed it. That naming is purely, so as the shots come in, so the next one will say NGC 3372 I800 S30 times 1, and it'll be frame number 34 coming from this Canon camera. It's so I can put them into folders as a history of tonight's observing. So here we go. NGC 3372 coming right up. Now this is so spectacular, I've got to go back into full screen viewer here. Uh, turn on the color adjustments. Zoom out again, zoom in again, and turn everything off, and wait for an eye-popping explosion of colour. The Eta Corinna Nebula, the Great Nebula in Corinna, a large bright nebula surrounding several open clusters. Can be seen with the naked eye, which it can. The central part known as the Keyhole Nebula, a famous dark zone. So we'll see that very shortly. You heard the shutter sh close before, so it's processing a shot now in the background in Astro Toaster, and it will be appearing very shortly. Spectac- oh, look at that. It's stretched a buggery, mind you. Excuse the language, just because of um, it needs to be brightened up. So I'm going to click expand. One, two, three. There's a lot of data missing compared to the shots I do with RAW, by the way. Um, it's almost like the black's all clipped. I see lots of dark dust nebulosity in here and all sorts of stuff. I'm going to zoom out here. Okay, let's drag it around a bit better. Here we go. So why is it... Uh, well, I know how to get some more stuff. It's just to go along, but... Um, 
There's a problem going on here. Must be brightness, maybe. Let's go brighter. Okay, and I'm going to drop the contrast because that will. Here we go. And now if I expand again, one, two, three, let's see what I can get. It's not a lot of data though, 30 seconds. So now brightness. Here we go. So what we can see is bright stars all around the place. I th think, let's just go over this way. Go right in. This is the Keyhole Nebula, which is where I'm heading, for obvious reasons. Now brightness needs to go way down because it is too bright. And we're getting close to what I want to show you guys. Okay, so as well as the Keyhole Nebula, which is turned sideways here, look at this very clearly defined black objects they're called bock globules very dark dust in the foreground there it's amazing that those things exist like that absolutely stunning very short exposure and here comes the pole one chopper he's probably going to be turning his lights off and having a look at what i'm doing shortly lovely cluster over here you can just see It's like a double star, red giants everywhere. Spectacular. Very spectacular. I'm tempted to uh, to do a little uh, trick with this one, to be honest with you. Very tempted. For starters, I'm tempted to go to 1600. I just love this object, you can tell. Ah, I'll leave it as it is. Let's keep looking around. <coughs> All right. Um, running chicken nebula nearby center. Uh, where are we? Running chicken nebula. Can I get that as a number? Here it is. I see two nine four eight. I see two nine four eight. I'm going to have to change catalogs. Here we go, IC catalogue, 2948, enter, enter, view object, here we go, IC2948, back, 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 oops, I see two nine four eight. Okay. Let's see what we can get. I don't think I've ever shot this in JPEG before, to be honest with you. <coughs> see what it looks like in a minute. By the way, another trick with shooting JPEGs, which I don't use, is there is a noise reduction feature in Canon cameras and Nikon cameras which is called multi-shot noise reduction and what it does in is in camera um, stacking only does it with JPEGs doesn't do it with raw files so uh, it's designed to reduce noise in low light situations when you're hand holding a camera so in order to get sharpness it physically does a stack. It overlays pixel over pixel over pixel just like stacking does. 
and designed to be able to cope with handheld shakes. So it is a very precise and accurate stacking and it stacks four of them. That means it'll halve the noise in the final shot. But in true stacking style, um, it um, means you've got to take four shots. So basically what you do is you set multi-shot noise reduction and it's got to be JPEGs and you take you set the intervalometer here for 10 seconds or 30 seconds and it will sit there going click 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 with four 30 second shots so two minutes later finally this monitor thing shows up but you end up with a stack and uh, if I shot four 30 second shots and let Astrotoast to stack it it would take um, 30 seconds times four two minutes plus four extra minutes to do the stacking of four shots so it would be eight minute wait. So it is actually much, much quicker than Astro Toaster stacking if you shoot JPEGs and use the four shot multi bit reduction. Because like I said, you'd be uh, you'd be only waiting, uh, instead of uh, waiting six minutes, you'd like uh, two minutes for the shots plus a minute to stack each of the four in Astro Toaster. So six minutes, you're only waiting two minutes which is to take uh, four 30 second shots in camera. So two minutes versus six minutes, which do you prefer? Anyway, um, the running chicken, I haven't got enough uh, data there. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to go, do I want to do this? No, I'll just go to 1600 for the hell of it and set the differences. Um, I haven't changed the name of the file, so it'll come in saying it's ISO 830 seconds, but that's okay. I just want to see if I can get uh, a bit more of the actual wings and stuff. Uh, this is the cluster down there. There's the bright uh, star south of it. Um, so it's wings, that's its eye. And then the wing comes forward over there and over here. So it's not come out particularly good, this JP, but it's only 30 second shot anyway, so what the hey. So there's the shot processing. We'll see it change shortly. Oh, slow processing too, it's turned red. Don't know why. Maybe it's because the ShareX video is clogging up things again. Oh, look at that, look at the difference. Now that's fantastic, that's actually pretty darn schmick. As I said, you can see the arm over there. I might start shooting at 1600 instead of 800. <laughs> and there it is all around there. We'll go back and do Karuna at 1600. That's pretty darn schmicko. Let's go full screen. Uh, color adjustments. And go up a little. Nah, it's jumped again two or three notches. Stupid thing. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that size like that. Drag it up. Double tap. And there it is. So there's the eye of the chicken. That's kind of like its mouth wide open or whatever. And that's the lobe on top of its head. There's a wing. Oh, so let me uh, turn it around and you can see what I mean. So rotate. There it is. Uh, uh, mm, yes. So um, now you do have to zoom in a tad. Okay, well at least this is how I always see the chicken. Eye, mouth, big right hand wing up in the air, big left hand ring up in the air, and with exposure you can get a blob down here which kind of looks like its feet. At least that's how I look at it. Um, so if I go rotate, 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 should get back to how we were. And back out. What's the noise? Don't care. Double tap. Pretty cool. Anyway, let's go back and quickly do Eta Corinna because I'm sure it's going to bring out more wow factors now that we've shot it at 1600. So 3372. Object list, I went too far. Name star, no solar, no NGC. Here we go, 3372. 372, enter, enter, view object. <coughs> wow, look at the stars in that. That's spectacular. Just spectacular. Anyway, uh, normal viewer. 
groups. I might just name this one properly because I didn't name the other one correctly. So here we go. So this is going to be ISO 1600 and this will be NGC3372. I just love that Eta Corinna, that's probably the problem. You can you can tell. So here's the shot. And we'll go back into full screen. And once again it's resized itself. <sighs> Maybe the new version doesn't. Double click. Here we go. And we just wait for Eta Corinna to come up. That's pretty sweet. Color balance doesn't look too bad now. The blues and reds are nice, but it seems to have a bit of a green cast over everything. Anyway, so that was a shutter just tripped or finished. So shortly we'll get a more detailed view of Eta Corinna, given its ISO 1600. Camera. Nah, still looks all blown out and crappy. Because, like I say, normally there's dust all the way through here. It looks really spectacular. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm spoilt now by shooting raw. I'll shoot that in raw later on, just show the difference. Anyhow, we're doing VA video astronomy quick moving around at the moment so let's not worry too much about it um, what's around here here's a jewel box cluster that's not a bad cluster we've done Amiga actually I know where we can go let's go around here now um, we can't get the row off of Yishi because my camera's much too narrow field of view for that. It's a huge object. Um, but what we can do is go to Cat's Paw Nebula for obvious reasons. Call the Cat's Paw Nebula. And it is uh, NGC. Oh, no, that's the Bug Nebula. That's tiny ass. That's like freaking one arc minute. So let me zoom in and catch the right one. Cat's Paw Nebula, here it is. Cat's Paw. Here we go. Centre information. NGC 6334. NGC 6334. Enter. Enter. View object. Here it is. So, uh, normal viewer... File name, NGC, we'll leave it at 1600, see what it does, doesn't hurt it, just a bit, bit more noisy, 6334, 6334, my god it's getting freaking cold, I'm just going to put my hoodie on, I've got a beanie on as well, but Jesus, it's cold, anyway, it beeped, let's give that a hit, Slowly. I wonder if I've. Uh, come on, color adjustments. Yeah, you could brightness turn down heaps of that one. But then again. Uh, take contrast down a tad. And raise brightness up a tad. Yeah, never going to get everything there. Anyway, here's Eta Corinna, and shortly we'll see the Bugs Paw Nebula. And there it is. Bugs Paw? <laughs> what, what the hell? Cat's Paw. Right. Let's just... I've got a bit of vignetting going on there. And there it is, Catspaw Nebula. 
full screen. It's probably going to zoom in again and zoom out as I muck around. We'll try and raise the contrast again. Here we go. And drop the brightness. Yeah, make it a bit bigger. It'll probably jump in size. Hmm. Didn't jump too badly. Put this down. Oh, yes, it did. Here we go. The Cat's Paw Nebula. Very cool. Uh, butterfly cluster, very nice cluster. Ptolemy's cluster, that's a lovely cluster. I like that Ptolemy's cluster. We'll go there next. Messier 7, it's called. Probably got an NGC catalogue, it has. 6475. 6475. Here we go. Beautiful object, that, eh? The pads. Cat's poor. Lovely. Um, back here. 6475, which is going to be Ptolemy's cluster. Whoops. 6475. And give it a shot. Go back to full screen viewer. Double. It always shrinks down again, and then when you try to... Yeah, we'll leave it at that scale there, what the hell. <clears throat> Gonna have to download the new version onto my MacBook. I've tried it on another PC I've got at home, it works fine. The latest version's got some nice advanced features. But uh, I just haven't put it on my little old MacBook. I tend to avoid updating software once it's all working properly. It usually breaks something and it's no good. Stellarium on this PC breaks a lot of stuff, which is why I tend to ignore it and use the iPad with Sky Safari instead. So very shortly we should see Ptolemy's cluster. Huge star field and lots of beautiful bright blue and um, red stars coming right up. And there it is. Look at that. Oh. And again, that green hue is coming through badly. I'm going to have to drop it even further. It's really annoying me. Yeah, hang on a second. What's going on here? Have I dropped it too far? So these 10,200, 300. Trying to get back to some half decent. Oop, too much now. I don't know. Hopefully I haven't stuffed that colour balance around too much. Anyway, it is what it is. There it is. Next, uh, oh, the usuals, the lagoon, followed by the Trifford. Great nebulas, these ones. Uh, lagoons next. Some beautiful block globules in that. NGC. Hmm, which is which? Messier 8 is the cluster, it'll be 6523. 6523, enter, enter, enter. Okay. 65. 
two, three. Six, five, two, three. Huh? Six, five, two, three. Can't press enter there. Hmm. <coughs> so shortly, this will be Messier 8. Lagoon Nebula. Earliest observations made by, goodness, uh, Giovanni Herderna before 1654. Wow. Amazing. Big object too, by the way. Huge object. Mm -hmm. Here's the shutter. Processing in red up the top. Slow down. I'll just drag this up into the view and shortly that will refresh. With Messier 8. Look at that. Now I've got too much red going on. And drop the red a bit. And if I bring green up a bit now. Yeah, not going to worry too much about colour balance. Full screen. Zoom in, zoom out. <laughs> yep, right on. There's these uh, box globules again. See the very dark, dusty bits in there, the little, very dark areas. And uh, yeah, it's very spectacular. Brightness I'm going to drop. And there we go. Spectacular. Let's zoom out again. Wow. And we'll go to the Trifford next, right next door. The Trifford is called NGC 6514. 6514. Very close by the mount slewing, and you can hardly hear it. So, to the normal view. Back around. Oops. Six, five, one, four. It's just a touch screen. I'd be able to just touch it. Anyway, shots off. All this red hydrogen nebulosity, two different types, hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta. Hydrogen beta, I think, is the more pinkish one. Hydrogen alpha is the more reddish one. Looks a bit garish there, but yeah, it's very short exposure and highly stretched. As I say, the raw files come out very, very dark. But boy, when you stretch out the colours in them, shoot nine of them to stack. Oh, beautiful. Anyway, Trifford coming right up. It should look pretty spectacular because it's JPEG. It brings the colours out straight away, as you'll see shortly. And there it is, with M21 little cluster down the bottom. That's a very spectacular shot. Let's go full screen and blow it up a bit so again i'll probably press this plus and it'll way over zoom yeah, it's not too bad there it is so it's called a trifford because of the red nebulosity they thought originally that tri divided it into three tri one lobe over there on the right two lobes there and the third lobe kind of here so trifected Hence Trifford. This is red hydrogen glowing, ionised by the stars behind it. This blue nebulosity is reflection nebula of dust and other elements where the stars are in the foreground, or sorry, um, 
they're reflecting yeah well basically they're in the foreground and this is light reflecting off that nebulosity and the black is again dark dust lanes which don't appear as globules but they appear as dust lanes that's what the trifection is caused by heavy heavy dust from supernovas of past stars again the massive star field which is also close by this is near to the M24 Sagittarius star cloud which is down this way down there in the this little cluster here is M21 little cluster of stars very spectacular uh, Sagittarius star cloud I mean it's just ridiculous the Sagittarius star cloud we'll go there and I'll show you what it looks like just crazy um, I'm going to use the Messier catalog and send it there now <coughs> so if I go up object list enter down again NGC IHC Messier I, I know this one off by heart because it's spectacular view object yes and double tap to bring up the menu to the normal viewer uh, back out. here we go we'll call this one M24 file name M24 oops back up M24 okay this will just be a mass of stars when the shot comes in now it's gonna do its usual rubbish again so zoom out zoom back in that'll do <clears throat> okay M24 coming up when you hear the shutter trip closed there was the shutter so 20 seconds to for Astro Toaster to grab it out of the folder and do its colorizing stretching whatever it does according to those adjustments in the color adjustments we know which you've seen popping in and out oh, I shot of the trifid that for 30 seconds and there it is have a look at that <laughs> it's missed it a little bit it's more down here but it's just insane just insane the density of stars so this is looking through our arm itself which is the Orion arm and it looks at a gap in the Orion arm which allows us to see the Sagittarius arm which is what this is so absolutely incredible now the Crescent Nebula is up the top which I've never shot I can't click on it either so let me go and have a look at it it's a very very um crescent nebula the planetary nebula da, 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 very low magnitude i'm not sure i'm going to get it but i'll give it a hit back to the ngc catalog oh it's ridiculously small 0.6 minutes oh no i'll never get to see it must be another crescent nebula compared to the one i know um, where was I going? Um, Alright, so down to the Amiga Nebula, which I think is also called the Lobster Nebula down here. And I can see now my mount battery is starting to flash at me. Yeah, the Lobster Nebula. NGC 6618. Or Messier 17. I'll click that. Messier 17. Enter. Enter. I'm going to have to pack up shortly, everybody. Very small slew. One more viewer. Messier 17. You can hear that mount going very, very slowly now. It's flashing at me. It's saying it's battery slow. 17. Rush through these shots. Spectacular object, looks like a lobster, very red. <coughs> we'll go back to full screen. And once again, oh, I'll just double tap it. Oh, my back. My back's also starting to play up every way day. Oh. Wait for the shutter to trip. 
There it is. So about another 15 or 20 seconds and we should see the lobster or a bigger nebula, also called a swan nebula too. We tend to think of it in the southern hemisphere as the lobster nebula. And there it is. Yeah. Alright, tail, front bit of it, claws, a bit too stretched. I'm going to knock that back. It's bringing out so much nebulosity up above, it's, um, hot. it's kind of hiding what it is. Looks better like that. You can see more of the tail just here, body, kind of the legs, a couple of little arms at the front. Beautiful, lovely asterisms around here. Look at this little string of stars there, little string of stars there. Very cool. Next, what have we got before everything runs out? Um, I'd love to. What's that? Um, what, what galaxies are in? Hang on, let's have a look here. Um, M83, I like that galaxy. 83. There we go. Mount sounds alright. Uh, let's rotate around again. Righto. Out of that viewer. Seems to have zoomed in again. Spectacular face on galaxy. Here we go. I'm just going, oh, I might as well trip the shot and have a quick look at um, the color adjustments when this comes in. Oh, man, she's c c c cold. Let me just zoom in again. Zoom out again. And we might be able to go to expand when this galaxy shot comes in. It's quite a nice galaxy. Big one. Here's the shutter just stripped. shortly and there it is so terribly noisy alrighty so what do we got here expand Ooh, lots of uh, one two three there we go and brightness, contrast, contrast is down heaps. And brightness down a tad. So there we have it. Um, barred, because of the bar across the middle. Spiral, because of the spiral bit. So it's a barred spiral galaxy, that thing. And it is... Um, distance 16 million light years away so it is a big galaxy that one there we have it anyway I'm going to have to shut everything up now and um, 
stop the video and all that so I do hope this has been fun and a little bit informative uh, stop and again just so you guys know so tomorrow I can grab all of these images and keep them as a record of tonight's observing because they're all named for me and I know what they were shot with apart from one or two which I before I switched to 16 ISO 1600 um, but yeah um, I'll pause it I will actually make a, a shot of this in um, I'll jump in the car and keep warm I'm gonna make a stacked shot and I'll start the video up to show you what it looks like in raw and stacked I'll, I'll do it in raw first um, just to center it a bit better actually more than anything so here's the viewer uh, so I need to go to the file list Oh, geez, it's cold. Shooting in raw. Um, plot changes. Go over here. Double tap that. Shoot in raw. And can I see any really bright stars? Yes, there's two. And how is that framed? Yeah, it's just it's just got to go a little bit to the left and up so I'll show you how to frame this using Canon live view so you can see those two stars in Canon live view so I can use the remote control the hand control to move it live to move it and center it so that'll be bringing that across how do I want this I want those two about there and then up at the top of the frame. 